Many people have unknowingly left the door open to curses, demonic activity, spiritual bondage, and all kinds of unclean spirits to operate in their lives simply because they are entertaining things that are deeper than the natural eye can see. If you find any of the following objects or items in your home, renounce it, burn it, ask God for forgiveness, and plead the blood of Jesus Christ. The first thing you need to get rid of in your house are any religious objects that are not related to Christianity. For example, in a believer's home, there should not be any other religious object or sign from, say, Buddhism, Hinduism, Native American religions, or even African ancestral objects. And I get it. We go to different parts of the world and we bring home souvenirs, but what I am warning against is any type of souvenir or object that is linked to a religion or a pagan god. The truth is that in this day and age, what some people may view as a god can actually be a demon. Some Native American art, some African art, or sculptures are deeply connected to some type of spiritual ideology. And then you have things like Buddha statues and the like, things, ideologies that are completely contrary to Christianity. Now, you may say it's just a core, it's just furniture, but this is where the deception is. Let me give you a quick example. Yoga is a very popular activity. It looks harmless. It's promoted as being great for your physical well-being. But when people practice yoga, how many of them know that when they're going into certain specific poses and chanting certain things, how many of them know that they are invoking ancient Vedic or Hindu utterances? It's not advertised in the mainstream, but do your research as to where the practice of yoga comes from, and you'll find out. In certain parts of the world, those hymns and mantras were actively recited out loud to praise and invoke the powers of spiritual deities or realms. So on the face of it, it looks innocent. But on a deeper level, there is more to it. And it's the same for these items in your home. The second category of things and items that you need to get rid of in your house is any demonic symbols. Now, this can be on paintings, on clothes, on jewelry. For example, anything with the inverted pentagram or the goat or the all-seeing Illuminati eye or the Leviathan. A lot of these things are rooted in Satanism and the occult, and you can say it's just an image or it's just a painting, but this is where we need wisdom because we are in a real spiritual battle as Christians, and the devil loves an ignorant believer. The third category of things and items that you need to get rid of in your house is any occultic or new age objects. And by this, I'm talking about things like astrology, fortune card readings, tarot cards, Ouija boards, and even good luck charms. Leviticus 19 verse 31 says, Give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits. Do not seek after them, to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Some may view these things as light entertainments, but Christians should have wisdom. As Christians, we don't operate on superstition or luck. We look to God's word and his promises. Things like divination, seeing what will happen in the future, all these things are evil in nature and forbidden by the word of God. God may reveal things to you as you pray. He may reveal things to you through dreams, but that's different. That is God himself talking to you and confirming things through his word and through other believers. The fourth category of things and items 
that you need to get rid of in your house is any form of entertainment related to witchcraft and the occult. This means you need to look at the kind of books you're reading. Anything related to the spiritual world, magic, manifestation, and so forth. So ask yourself, what types of movies are in your home? What kind of posters are up? What kind of video games are your kids purchasing or playing? What type of board games are in your garage? Believe it or not, certain objects invite certain spirits. Media providers are no longer shy about presenting content with ties to the dynamic world. Many entertainers know, young and old, freely speak about their involvement in New Age, witchcraft, and the occult. So if you have posters of certain movies that are linked to the supernatural, if you have memorabilia or merchandise from a show related to the occult, get rid of these things. Remember, Satan is the great deceiver. He is an expert at making the dangerous seem benign and the dark things seem attractive. He is a liar. His intent is to deceive and destroy and lure you away from where God wants you to be. Scripture calls believers to be sanctified, to be in the world but not of the world, to be set apart and not engaged in that which does not honor the Lord. As for books, I feel this is an important aspect of cleansing your home because some people, some Christians, knowingly and perhaps unknowingly, they keep New Age material, occultic material, books related to sorcery, magic, and supernatural manifestations. All of these books need to be burned. We need to learn from the story in Acts chapter 19. The Apostle Paul is in Ephesus preaching the gospel boldly. God's hand is on Paul and he is able to perform powerful miracles. These unusually powerful miracles included instances where handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people and they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. And so Paul was doing the work of God. But a group of men saw this and wanted to imitate this power. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation saying, I command you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, to come out. These men, who were actually sons of a priest named Siva, were doing something dangerous. They were essentially playing in the spiritual realm without God's covering. Now one day, these seven sons went to cast out a demon. However, the evil spirit replied to them and said, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them and attacked them with such violence that they fled the house naked and battered. Now after this happened, the story spread to all those living in Ephesus and the people were all seized with fear. But the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery, that is, the use of magic, they all brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The point of this story is that when you come to Christ, all sinful practices must be burned away, especially those things related to the use of magic. So it doesn't matter how much you enjoyed reading a book or what it taught you. As a Christian, we ought to get rid of any books that are occultic in nature. We ought to destroy any kind of spell books or incantation books, and we need to get rid of manifestation books. Our homes are more than just physical structures. They are places of refuge, love, 
and spiritual growth. Now, I believe that we should be seeing God's presence and blessings within our households each and every day. I want to highlight some things that people with spiritual gifts experience. And I'm talking to the person who may experience strange things or intense spiritual warfare that seems inexplainable. But before we begin, let's look at the biblical definition of spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 10 says, To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. And to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Oftentimes, a lot of us don't know why the devil is fighting us. We'll scratch our head and think, is it just me? Was it something I did? But let me tell you something. The reason why the devil fights us a lot of the time is because he wants to keep you from discovering what's inside you. The devil is afraid of who you'll become should you fully commit to the Lord. The devil is afraid of you discovering the gifts that God gave you. Oftentimes, we don't know why the devil is fighting us. But may I submit to you that you have a gift inside you, a gift that will anger the kingdom of darkness. Your gift is what the enemy is trying to stifle. It's what he's trying to choke out of you. So he'll throw naysayers your way. He'll throw discouragers your way. The enemy sends people your way. He sends the Pharisees and Sadducees, those people who are self-righteous and consider themselves to be highly educated and better than you. He sends them to try and talk you out of your calling. You can't sing worship. You can't teach the Bible. You can't preach. But you see, the devil can throw these rocks, but none will injure you. The devil will throw fiery darts at you, but none will pierce you. That's why the Bible says, your gift will make room for you. Your gift will make room for you because no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I would like to add to the fact that in order for us to realize our gifts, for us to fully experience the gifts that God has placed within us, there has to be a desperation about us. We desperately need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We desperately need to get the Word of God in our hearts. We desperately need to get on our knees in prayer. That's how you'll learn your gifts and know what it is that God has placed inside you. If you want to live out your calling, if you want to walk effectively in your assignment, you have to know. You need to know what it is He has placed in you. And if you're wondering what these so-called gifts are, the Bible says that we have different spiritual gifts and they come from the Holy Spirit. But the devil does not care that you have gifts as long as he can keep you from activating them. If he can keep you in the dark, if he can discourage you, then his job is done. This is why wisdom and knowledge is so important for the believer. The devil is after you because of the gift inside of you. And some of you will keep finding yourself under attack, one after the other, one battle followed by another constant opposition. But hear me, it's like this. You're being attacked like this because you are making strides in your spiritual life. As you're growing in faith, he knows that sooner or later, you're going to break through and realize or recognize your gifts. That's why the attacks are launched. But during that time, during a season of attack, as a child of God, you should be persistent. A thief doesn't break into an empty house. They don't. There's nothing of value in a house that's empty. There's nothing to steal. But when you find the devil trying to break into your life, it's because he knows. He knows what's inside you. He knows the heights you can reach. He knows the value, the gift inside of you. And that's what he wants. 
The enemy hates the Christian man or woman who is walking in their calling, operating in their gift with power, with humility, and with integrity, all for the glory of God. That's what the enemy hates to see. So you need to be aware that when the devil wants to disrupt your life, he will throw hell and the kitchen sink in your direction. And I'm talking about when you find yourself in a place where there is challenge after challenge, bad news followed by more bad news, one tragedy after the other. Do you remember what happened to Job? Before one servant could finish delivering bad news, another person came in with more bad news? Now let me tell you why the devil will fight you so fiercely when he sees that God is about to do something in your life. He fights you so fiercely because he wants to drive you into a pit of despair. He wants to get you to a place where you are so down, so discouraged, so consumed with your troubles that you take your eyes off the Lord. And once you take your eyes off the Lord, you're right where the devil wants you to be. Imagine if Job had been so down and discouraged that he cursed God like his wife encouraged him to. This would have proved the devil's point that Job only loved God because of what he had. And so you see, some attacks from the enemy are just meant to be endured. Sometimes you simply have to say, Lord, stand with me during this storm and give me strength. When the devil throws all he can at you, sometimes the only thing you can do is stand in faith. Stand in prayer. Stand in expectation that God will deliver you in his perfect timing. Now, another sign that you need to be aware of is that when the devil wants to disrupt your life, he'll usually send a type of Judas into your life. And by a Judas, I mean someone who is in your inner circle, but they will be used of the devil. The devil will use people to frustrate you, to discourage you, to vex you and try you. Now, as Christians, we should be aware of this people aren't necessarily evil. The Bible says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. In this spiritual realm, a child of God is never in a fight with another person. We are fighting the spirit behind the person. Remember that before Judas betrayed Jesus, the Bible tells us in Luke 22, verse 3, then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. The devil entered Judas. This is not to say everyone who opposes you has the devil in them. No. But when you find that someone is relentlessly malicious and evil towards you, this person could be under the influence of the devil with the sole purpose of drawing you away from God's plan. They'll try and entice you away from waiting on God by getting you to focus on all of the commotion they're causing in your life. 